Gotham City, now. The Gotham Royal Theater was constructed four years ago, not long after the events of what became known as Gotham's Zero Year. The theater was part of a cultural reconstruction initiative, a second phase of rebuilding. The idea was, now that the city's infrastructure had been repaired, it was time to rebuild Gotham's arts facilities, bigger and better than before, to make them places the people of Gotham could escape to and express their hopes and fears. I was on the Royal Theatre Board and noticed more and more money pouring into the construction. In a few months, we were nearly $300,000 over budget. I went personally to see what was going on. The architect was a friend of mine named Wade. When I asked him about the money, he pointed up. He'd constructed a special harness for the theatre. They were doing Orestes and... Wade explained, at the end of the play, there was a deus ex machina, a moment when a god, Apollo, descends from the sky to save the characters from destruction. Bruce, he said, after all we've been through, I just want that to feel real. I want everyone to believe in that god coming down to help. I just want them to feel saved. And in the end, and what could I say to that? I repeat, someone appears to have launched a chemical attack against Midtown Gotham. Literally minutes ago, without warning, a cloud of gas emerged from the sewer grates effectively covering nearly 10 square blocks. The scene has been pandemonium as the police work to clear the area. Fortunately, it seems that at this point, nearly everyone has been evacuated from the affected neighborhood. Bless the men and women of the GCBD. Lola, we have more breaking information just now. Through initial reports coming in, the Gotham Department of Homeland Security, well, this is strange. It seems the gas itself, after preliminary tests, appears to be harmless. Harmless? A gas attack with harmless gas? It's almost like someone wanted to clear the area. Looking at the perimeter, it's tightly circumscribed. A circle, like a stadium or an arena. Come on, then. It's just you and me now. You think you can take me here in my city? Then step into the ring. Welcome to Gotham. This is Jimbab Productions, audio podcast of Batman Endgame Part 1. Written by Scott Snyder, penciler, Greg Capullo, inker, Danny Mikey, colorist, FCO, Placenia, letterer, Steve Wands, cover, done by Capullo, Mikey, and Placenia, variant cover, done by Andy Kubert and Brad Anderson. Monster Variant was done by Brian Stelfreeze. Assistant Editor, Matt Humphreys. Editor, Mark Doyle. And of course, Batman, created by Bob Kane. Just as a foreclosure, Jim Bab Productions does not claim the rights or ownership over the following content provided in this audio podcast. All rights and credit are given to DC Comics and the creators of the Batman Endgame Part 1 issue. Keep going, and don't aim for the ridges in their bells. The Rothalia, they're sensory bundles. There are too many. Let's keep pushing, Lark. Their ship is. Batman, there's nowhere to push. They're everywhere. I won't accept that. Penny one, come in, Pen. Ah, uh, no. Ah, uh. sir, your vitals, sir. Old Wayne Tower, thirteenth floor, twenty-nine minutes ago. Sir. Sorry, Alfred. This injection should put an end to the visions. I can't imagine it's been pleasant seeing your own end over and over. Regardless of how colorful the variations might be... They are colorful. A Cassandra strain of fear toxin. Crane is an artist. I'll give him that. I must have a correlation to the mechanism that causes us to wake when we die in dreams. My guess is it's based on some inversion of the neurochemistry. Regardless, you're feeling alright now? They're just nightmares. 
and it's daytime, or so it seems. Well, there's nothing old about these. Fully one way. Liquid crystal on silicate. There's a crime, you'll see it three-dimensionally, plotted against the city. Huh, I'm impressed. You looking for a butler job? I beg your pardon? Now that's a nightmare. I'm here till Dad feels better, Bruce, and then there'll be a brilliant flat in Walthamstow calling my name. Far from anything bat-shaped. I must say, it will do nicely, this one. Once we get rid of all the owl trash. But yes, after everything the past year, I feel better being at the center of the city. Keeping more of the heavy metal here, down in the new bunker. And admittedly, it is practical, resting over the old train tunnels. Should I expect a bat train sometime soon? Bat monorail, actually. Trademark pending. The funny thing is, I don't know if you're even joking anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. Don't make me laugh. It hurts. When I laugh, ha. <laughs> Ah, oh, Master Bruce, you're always hurting. Look at it. This city will outlive us all. It gets younger, and we get older. You get older, I get better. I'm in my prime. Sorry, sir, I couldn't hear you through all the bandages. Just remember, you're not a god, Master Bruce. You... Boys, you'll both live forever. Now tell me. What the hell is that? Uh, <coughs> Diana! Quiet, Bruce. I'm not going to listen to you anyway. Actually, I think you are. Uh, You're only prolonging the inevitable, Bruce. Damn it, will you just talk to me? What the hell is going on? I'm Simple, free. Bruce. The League is here to do something we've wanted to do for a long time. Kill you! Bruce! Bruce! Are you okay? What the bloody hell is she? Julia, you and Alfred have to enact Plan Fenrir. <coughs> are you sure? Can you get down to the suit? Just do it! Release the damn gas! Now, she means to kill you, Bruce. There's no conflict in her about it. No pupil dilation, no hesitation in her movements. Whatever is doing this to her, she's a bit slower than normal. But the fact remains. She's not pulling her punches, so you can't either. Diana, you have to fight through whatever this is. Please, tell me who did this to you. Maybe no one did this to me, Bruce. Did you ever think of that? Maybe I just hate you. Maybe we all do. And this is simply the end. And you can hide in that suit. But chain mail. Kevlar. There isn't an armor in existence. I haven't cut through. To bring an enemy the truth. Diana, why? Shh. Just let it go, Dark Bruce. Let it go, Dark. She's right. She's a warrior of truth. So the way to beat her is with a lie. The relic is called the Bind of Veils, and it was woven by Hephaestus in a moment of doubt, not long after he forged her lasso. He used an inverted version of the same weave. It's said to be made from wool from the sheep of Odysseus's men, used to trick the Cyclops. It took me nearly two years to track it down on the magical black market. The suit isn't just armor. It's designed for war, with the most powerful heroes on the planet. Base, are you picking up any others? Negative, sir. Nothing yet. Run, Red! This next part happens faster than I can process it. I've put more money into this suit than about 60% of the world's nations own into their respective militaries. And a good deal of that money went towards a protocol for one man, making sure the servers were fast enough for him. Faster than any human reaction. Fast enough to map his movements, assuming he wasn't at optimal speed. And then fire the frictionless coating exactly where it needs to be. Before he can react. The strike is so fast, 
The whole thing is over before I even know it. Bruce. Diana. Barry. Now Arthur. It's too much for any human telepath. And Diana's defenses against magic. Who the hell is doing this? Enough tricks and gadgets. Now turn and face me like you have some damn honor and we'll... That's the thing, Arthur. There's no honor in a street fight. The foam is made from powdered magnesium carbonate. It's the most absorbent material on Earth. Covered in so many pores that a single gram has nearly 800 meters of surface area. Bottom line, the more you struggle, the more moisture it rips from your body. Now look at me. Tell me who did this. I look at you and uh, I see a dead man. That's all. Damn it, Arthur. Who did this? We're picking up movement. Something big. Coming at you. Sir, you should. I'm staying here. It's the only safe place to fight them. Get ready to react, Bruce. If it's Vic, the electromagnetic nerve tree is up. Hal, you've got the citrine neuralizer. Just please, please let him still be off planet. See, but the truth is, when gods do come down, it's terrifying. Because you never know what they're going to do. Hello, Bruce. Sorry about your little justice buster suit. Clark, please. See through this and talk to me. Who did this to you? Who? Well, Bruce, it's actually sort of funny. <laughs> no, no, not him. Oh, yes, Bruce. And no one's gonna save you this time. <laughs>